everyone hope you all are doing very well sorry i am traveling these days so there is really no continu continuity in sharing videos in this video my objective is to share you a very new open source project named cerebras and why it is important for you i'm that's what explained in this video if you are working in the field of large language models and not as a consumer as the engineer or as the person who is really trying to make these large language model more adaptable to your organization enterprise acceptability or enterprise adaptability for these large language models how to train fine tune these models everything from scratch cerebras gpt is a project which is going to give you massive amount of knowledge so let's get ourselves started in this video our objective is to understand the very new open source project related to large language model named cerebras gpt which is basically a family of seven completely open source large language models the whole models are available in the public domain so our objective in this video is to learn why it is important or what is being provided by cerebras gpt team is important for anyone who is working in the field of large language model make them more adaptable to the enterprise or make them more sustainable or more accept acceptable to the places where these large language model can even provide much more granular results so first i'm showing you the cerebras home page and here you could see there is a family of open compute efficient large language models so the project behind cerebras team is that very recently about few weeks back they have released the seven models in public domain starting from 111 million training parameters all the way to 13 billion these are open source model available in public domain you can access all of those models in this hugging face cerebras model page and all these models depending on 13 billion parameter model if you look into the file size you will find is a 29 gig model going back to the smallest one which is 111 million and here you could see this model is about 486 meg so all these seven models are available in public domain that's one very good thing we have understood second why these models are important because cerebras gpt models are not very first open source large language model we already have the bloom model not only that there are several more large language models like neo gpts are also available in public domain like for example the llama large language model from meta and based on llama training method the stanford also has the alpaca model. so there are variety of these large open source language model what is the different coming out from the cerebras first thing is that that these models are trained using the chinchilla formula you have to understand if you are again going deep into the large language language models you are just not only the consumers of these model you want to build you want to even train a model totally based on your own need how you can go up to that route so understanding the formula is very important if we need to go to understand the chinchilla formula we need to go and look into this the research paper which is coming out from the google it's the how to train a optimal compute optimal large language models so as you see that these models are significant in terms of numbers of parameters what is happening here that while these models are being trained the data size training data is not really being changed a lot is gradually changes maybe sometimes the is the same training data however the training as the number of parameters are growing so the number of parameters are growing because the transformer architecture behind these large language model is actually analyzing the input data more and more based on query value and key method 
Now, I'm not going to go in detail in that one, but if you are interested or you do not know a lot, I would suggest you to look into uh, these, how the query key and values are generated. They are the foundation of these parameters. So these parameters are going to grow depending on how you are processing the input data. And as the more and more of these tokens will be created, even the same original data, data set, you are going to see the size of the model does not really act according to the number of parameter growth. So the idea here is that if you are trying to train a model and you have doubled the parameters, the mathematically it should double the size of the model because you are doubling the number of parameters. So here, as you could see that what Google team found behind it is that they found that these are the large language models. They are significantly under trained. It means you do not really need to add more data. However, you need to figure it out the how to generate the training process, which is compute optimal. As you could see here, in the optimal compute optimal training, the model size and the number of training tokens should be scaled equally. And if you look into here, this is the straight line, which is really saying that as the model are getting bigger and bigger in terms of number of parameters, the size is also having a very linear growth rate. And right. that's where the chinchilla formula comes into the practice and there is a Cerebras based on that come up with their own research article Cerebras GPT and that is what which is the compute optimal language model they are trained on the Cerebras web for scale cluster it means Cerebras team already has their own data center for to train these large language models depending on your personal need let's come back to here so as this point I would suggest to you to take two very important points. First, the Cerebras GPT, they have released full open source, they fully, they open source completely all of their seven large language models. Second, these models are based on Chinchilla formula. That's two important thing. Third, it is also clear that if you would want to keep training model by keeping the uh, training content same, as you will train more and more and more, all the way from because these models are from 100 million to 13 billion liter. and then calculating the uh, the, the the progress de depending on how your model is really going to grow depending on the number of parameters you are creating on your input training data so these models are following that and the third thing what you can take as of now is that you could actually utilize the cerebras gpt solution which is going to let you train everything from scratch or fine-tuning it one very important aspect of cerebras gpt is is that you have to understand this table while open ai gpt x models they are fully closed you can access them directly by using the api and if you can if you would want to add additional knowledge to those models, you can fine tune them. This is the Google DeepMind team who proposed this chinchilla. The model architecture is open, but majority of the information is not disclosed by the team. Meta OPT, majority of this is open. And then Pythia, I really don't have a much knowledge about it. And finally, Cerebras, everything is open. It means if you go to their GitHub, this is the GitHub for the Cerebras, if you go, uh, so this is the Cerebras GitHub page. I put, we need to look into the model zoo. So this is the model zoo where, as you could see, that if you would want to train the information depending on what is your objective, you can actually find, train your model depending on whatever model you want to base into. And as you could see, these are the different models type available and type TensorFlow as well as the PyTorch, both are available you can choose either one in some cases there is only one available but again so for example if you look into the gpt3 and you look into pi torch code everything available in this model too so go to the trans uh, pi torch here 
So in the transformer architecture needed to train your model. As you could see here, this is the code available. So for example, if you are interested in GPT-3, go to GPT-3. Here you can check the run Pi code and here is your data where you would want to and here is code available how you can start training the model and run code again you need to go a little more uh, deep uh, documentation to understand how to color download the data set which is being used for training how to retrain it how to modify if you would want to modify any of this thing how many nodes you would want to use in order to train it because the solution provided by Cerebros is that hey we're going to give you a cluster we're going to charge you uh, the runtime cost but you have ability to utilize everything open information to train your own model so now the question comes okay why you need to train model why you, or what is the fine tuning so at this point i would want you to understand three things models these large language models are trained this training is based on your input data and that's model is basically model model knowledge based based model knowledge to respond to your questions fine tuning is a way where you are adding additional knowledge to your model by giving your own new data this new data is processed as a vectors embedding or embedding vectors depending on your data depending on your data and the large language model combining with your embedding vectors based on new fine-tuned data is answering your question so additional knowledge you you are adding to your pre-tuned model so you are not training you are tuning it one more thing you can understand is the few short learning few short learning is different than training and fine-tuning because that is happening when you are in interrogating your model when I, why i'm saying interrogating because you are asking question and you are also providing a little more information in that regard so for example you are asking question to a model that hey uh, please give me the list of all the uh, codes i have and you are also providing few short means you are providing the code name code id code name code id and you are giving a list of code and code id in the few short learning when you are providing your prompt you are also providing the feedback data feedback to your prompt question what you have so your model is basically learning during the interrogation uh, step so that is called the learning so we have three very important aspect here training tuning and learning they so question comes that should you fine tune or should you train because the learning is a few short is a prompt time so the idea here is that hey you start you want to know whether you want to train or fine tune if your data size is very large coming there but if your data size is small why can't why you really need to tune it's sorry why you need to train because you already have a model fully trained everything it's gonna take just a few seconds to a few minutes depend on your data size and you can fine tune the model and now you are asking the question basically combining model plus these embedding vectors and you are getting response everything is very fast life is very good what if your content is very large it's better for you to completely train your model and that's where this thing happen is that if you would want to train a deep mind what data is used it's not public but here you can see that whatever data has been used to train these seven model has also been made public so you can use that data or if you if you want to just learn how to just duplicate all these model you can just follow all the methods everything and it's just gonna cost you a few thousand dollars and you can actually build these models by yourself because oh, everything is open source and then you replace all that input data and you add your own data and that's where it is now you have built a completely brand new model which you have trained by yourself and actually it is trained on your data you have replaced all the original data and you have added your own data now it what is the domain similarity so domain similarity is because now you have already trained it's a very large data if whenever you are going to use your training data now the question is every time when you are going to train your data you are going to use a pre-trained generic model to start with so the data which was used for the pre-trained generic model 
and the data you are using now to train the model are the same or not. For example, the data was related with web, just articles and all that thing, and your data is also web data or something like maybe your health content about your product or just generic information. So there is a lot more domain similarity within the data. However, the other difference could be that if you have data which is totally different, so for example, now the new data you would want to train is a language code, which is basically how to write solution on based on your product. It's a Python code, but it's a very different code. How to write your uh, functions, how your product work, everything quite different than the original data, which the the pre-trained generic the model was trained. So it was trained for web data. Now your new data is very new, totally different, two separate domain. That's why you need to start training from scratch. But if the similarity is there, just go ahead and fine tune it. Fine tuning would add more because you are adding new data. You are adding more epochs to train your data. And slowly, 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 your model is getting new and new parameters, more parameters, and your model is gonna go bigger and bigger. But now it is actually fine tuned with your data or trained with your data. It is very important to understand because if you choose any of the decision, the Cerebra CBD helps you to follow up that decision. Everything is open source. This uh, video, I'm not going to go very deep to go how to really do it. My idea would be that I, will, I can show you where you can actually follow whatever your objective is depending on the information available here. So the question comes whether you choose fine tuning or training from scratch, what is the cost is gonna occur for your objective? Okay. As, you, as you could see here, these are the model. They just like dedicated cluster. When these models were trained based on open source information related with these different models, you can see that 1K token means your input data, which you want to fine tune. If you had 10,000, 100,000, several million tokens, as you could see that the growth in your cost, fine tuning. So you can start getting an idea what infrastructure was used and how much time it was taken, depending on a number of machines, how much is going to cost. You can very quickly come up with a very nice adjusted cost estimation by following this table. However, here is the introductory price. Means if you'd want to train your own model, GPT-3 Excel, 1.3 billion parameter, it's gonna cost you about $2,500. If you would want to use the 20 billion parameter GPT Neo X and to token to the train, so 400 billion, now you can actually see it's gonna cost you that much money. So now you start getting idea that the bigger size, number of tokens, and if you'd want to train these models, again, where you are going to get these billions of parameters, you can actually read, keeping the input training data constant, you can keep adding more and more epochs and that is going to add more parameters, more query key and V values are being created. So, but you can get an idea that yes, you have an option to go from uh, very small to go for a broke model, if, if that's what you really say. Uh, so that's something I really wanted to show you that the power behind Cerebras GPT by open sourcing A to Z related to large language models. One very important aspect is that as you could see here that in these tables, as you could see that parallelization, the, the, the eight times A100 machines. So parallelization, so depending on the parallelization scheme, this image is important to understand is that when you are using your run.py, run.py is available in the model zoo. So if you are using GPT-2, this is GPT-2 run.py. If you are using GPT-3, you are going to find the GPT-3 run.py. These run.py has different parameters. These parameters are defined here where you can actually say that data set, number of nodes you would want to train. You are changing the number of nodes. These are the parallelization, degree of parallelization is going to add it while training the data where the model weight is going to be stored and then going forward, 
you can start working on that. So you can actually utilize the Cerebras cluster, but if you do not want to use it, actually you can go ahead and you have ability to train these models locally as well. So that's all I had for you in this video. I hope you have enjoyed the content. I do appreciate your time and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, thank you so much.